El liberalismo es un pensamiento político que surge en la Europa de la Ilustración para defender los derechos y libertades del individuo en la sociedad y que se basa en la máxima de que todos somos ciudadanos iguales ante la ley y tenemos el mismo derecho y las mismas oportunidades para desarrollar nuestras vidas de manera plena. Hoy, esta forma de entender el mundo da nombre y razones a partidos y presidentes en toda Europa, que gobiernan para más de 115 millones de ciudadanos de la Unión Europea, en países como Francia, Holanda o Estonia. Pero, ¿quiénes son en realidad? ¿Qué diferencia a un liberal alemán de un liberal húngaro u holandés, que une a todas estas personas que trabajan incansablemente por defender los ideales liberales en sus países y en la Unión Europea? Aquí comienza un viaje por los rostros, las historias y los escenarios del liberalismo europeo. Un viaje al pasado donde intentaremos explicar cómo hemos llegado hasta aquí y hacia dónde vamos. Un viaje, en definitiva, de por qué soy liberal. El kilómetro cero del liberalismo europeo es sin duda el Partido ALDE, la alianza de los liberales y demócratas europeos. El Partido ALDE se fundó hace casi 50 años y reúne a partidos liberales de más de 60 países de todo el mundo. Desde sus oficinas en Bruselas, el corazón de Europa, han visto de todo en distintas latitudes, países e idiomas. Partidos liberales nacer, crecer, vencer, hundirse y hasta desaparecer para luego renacer. De esa perspectiva que dan el tiempo y la distancia, hablamos con su secretario general, Jacob Morosa Rasmussen, un político danés tranquilo y reflexivo que viaja casi 200 días al año y conoce como nadie la historia del liberalismo en Europa. Hello, Jacob Morosa Rasmussen. We are here in the Alde Party headquarters. If you see the last 10 years, the results in Europe, and you see that since 2004, S&D and EPP, every new electoral uh, process they face, they go down and down and down. But still you see a lot of liberal movements in, in Europe that they appear, they disappear. They appear or they go up, they go to the national parliament with huge number and then they disappear from the national parliament. Why, why, why that's happening? I think this, is, this has something to do with a more general trend across uh, European societies right, that people are unhappy with the establishment, with the status quo. And in many countries, you, you've had a dual pole of a conservative and a, and, a, and a socialist party in the past. And that, that has started to be broadened out a bit more, just like the case in Spain, also with Sudanos taking a, a, a large share of the votes there, but the same in other countries as well. Uh, it's es essentially people want something to change with, with, with the old system, if, if you want to look at it this way. Uh, but partly it's also, quite frankly, some of the old established parties doesn't always renew themselves. Why is this that, that so many other parties, they, they have such a short time span of success? Look, at the end of the day, politics, Sometimes things are just going very easy for you and sometimes you get headwind, right? I mean, and it's, it's when things are looking tough that you, that you see the result of having done the hard work. And nobody just gets 10, 15, 20% of the votes out of nothing. You need to do your, do your homework, do the research, talk to the voters, talk to the, the focus groups, try to put a strategy in place, communication, and then you have to execute on it. And that is many hours at the end of the day, People flock to the new thing if they promise something better, right? And that means they move away from you if you're no longer the new thing. Unless you've done the homework, unless you have your communication plan. Figure out what is your core values, what matters to, the, to, to, to your voters. Don't do it on gut feeling, do the research. But you also need to be able to restrict yourself because this is where a lot of parties who are in trouble get into more trouble because they start shooting all over the place and the voters have no idea what you stand for because you feel a little bit of everything. If you want to connect to voters, stick to a few, one, maybe two, if you go completely crazy, three issues that you need to be known for. And they're going to create some also polarizing effect because it's always better that six or seven percent if you're in a really low uh, electoral turnout. 
uh, love your ideas and want to vote for you, and even if the remaining 93 hate you, but you're going to stick to those ideas that 6 7% they would really want to put on the public Ex opinion, Exactly. Right? And, 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 and this is also a, a valid point what you're bringing there, because you also need to figure out what is your ambition level, at least on the short and medium term. I mean, sure, if you think you're in a position to reach for 25 30%, you have to be a different kind of people's party, where you have to have a broader thing. But if, if your aim is to go for 6 7 10%, then stick to that core that people will love you for that way you can differentiate from the others because otherwise you became the, the same, just a different nuance of gray. When you're going up, it's easier, right? You're having tons of people coming in, uh, your ideas are always generating a good impact. But on the downsizing is when these new movements, they suffer a lot. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of members start jumping out, a lot of representatives start jumping out. Essentially, you, you need to, to keep staying on message. How do you get to that message? When you're on the downside, that you cannot react publicly to everything that happens? You do research. Research, research, research. Basically, make a strategy, stick to it. Because at the end of the day, if you follow a strategy, uh, you will get the results if, if you're clear in your message. They vote for you because you are going to help with whatever, uh, make, uh, make a federal Europe, uh, uh, fixing the economy, lowering unemployment, uh, raising the pension, whatever the issue is. In that the GTVI, sense. right, yeah, there yeah. are many issues. All, all these kind of things. But they need to associate you as their best champion for doing that. And if you are going all over the place, instead of having a sharp profile on these things, on, on one or two things, why would they vote for you if this thing's going down? Nobody wants to vote for, 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 for uh, be with somebody who, where it's going down. Everybody wants to be with the success, with the winner, right? At the end of the day, people, what do they vote? They vote a person or they vote a movement? I wish I could tell you a movement, but in most cases, they, they vote for, for what that person stands for, and at least with new parties. Um, I mean, because the party leader, uh, the, f the founder of the movement or whatever, Macron in France as an example as well, is the ambassador. He is the person finalization of what uh, the value of, of this movement is, right? Uh, and if you take that out, it can be difficult if you haven't, let's say, prepared the organization and the voters for that we are still the same just without this person, right? This is a good point because how the parties, the new parties are on the liberal spectrum that they are born uh, surrounding a really strong political figure, uh, how they recover when that figure is not any longer there, you know? What, 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 what they should do because that, that, then they should rebrand, they should change, they should... Uh, you, you, well, you don't necessarily need to change and rebrand, but you need to make sure that, that the party itself and the people itself and the voters knows that the party is more than just that one person. And that requires that you put other people front and center sometimes. That is not just the party leader, that you make sure that you're seen more at the right stage you, you, as a team, that you have more than one person then. So you're not dependent on that one leader. I have also seen that in some liberal parties, they compete with other parties that are difficult to beat in those areas. I'm going to put you the example of, of, of the Green parties. Mm -hmm. And we take all these uh, environmental policies that we are pushing, and, and liberals are very strong on these. We want you know, to, to do a, a, a strong change and impact so we, we stop uh, this uh, climate change. But at the same time, we have always in mind the economic sustainability of, of our societies and our economies. But then I see a lot of um, liberal parties that they try to compete on being greener than the Green Party, that they were always going to... They will always it. lose that battle, just like you would always lose the battle if you want to be tougher on immigration than the, than the anti-immigration parties. I mean, you will always lose this, because even if you move in that direction, the others already have the image and they can just move 5% further. What we've seen working a few places is don't go for the hardcore activists in this if, if there's already a Green Party that's their home or, or something else. But go for the voters who are starting to have the same concern about climate. I mean, t take a look at what, what happened uh, in the German election, right? Sure, the Green Party gained something, but not as much because, amongst others, FDP also started to acknowledge... FDP, okay, the, the we, German Liberal Party. Yeah. I mean, they, they, didn't, they didn't sell themselves as, as you know, the, the, the Green Party in, in Germany, but they said, of course, we acknowledge that there are challenges here with, with, with the climate. Of course, we need to fix it, but our plan is to fix it this way so we also ensure 
better jobs and, and, and a transition of the economy so we're ready for the future. They want to uh, hear that, look, we acknowledge and we will do something about the climate change, but we'll do it in a way so we won't all lose our jobs and, uh, and, and so on. Right now, if you see political uh, fights or struggles among different parties, I think we have in, we're in an asymmetric kind of conflict because you see populism and nationalism that they say whatever. Uh, and they have great uh, communication impacts. We are the opposite. We are more brained uh, kind of parties. We are overthinking it sometimes. At the end of the time, if we don't fight on the same electoral terms, we are going to be always on the losing side. Shall the liberals be a little bit more creative on how they manage and they communicate their, their political goals to try somehow to compete with these populist and nationalist movements? Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely have to be, because the one thing you should never do in politics is to be lured into the debate in a frame set by another party because the other party would always win that one. You have to find what is your communication message to the voters. What is it you want to be their champion for? Don't talk about climate on the terms that the Greens keep talking about or yelling about. As I said, in the, in the case of the German liberals, was we need to, to make this transition, not just because it's good for the climate change, but also it's very good for economy, right? It, it, it creates a lot of jobs. It can be very beneficial for us as a country. You, you change the, 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 frame. The, the frame completely there. You are not talking uh, based on climate, but climate is a side effect that people acknowledge it's a good to get in there. In the elecciones generales alemanas de 2021, el Partido Liberal Alemán, el FDP, sacaba un excelente resultado electoral que les llevaría a negociar el primer gobierno de la era post-Merkel. Sin embargo, ese triunfo era casi imposible de imaginar en 2013, cuando el partido se quedó fuera del Bundestag, del Parlamento Alemán, sin lograr ningún escaño. De triunfos, de fracasos y de cómo volver a levantarse sabe mucho Nicola Ver, compañera eurodiputada que también es vicepresidenta del Parlamento Europeo y vicesecretaria general del FDP. Ella fue una de las personas que, tras la caída, pilotó la travesía por el desierto, puerta a puerta, pueblo a pueblo y afiliado a afiliado de su partido. Hoy, el Partido Liberal Alemán marca el rumbo del futuro en Europa y es una historia de éxito a la que todos los partidos liberales europeos aspiramos a repetir. Well, Nicola Beer, thank you very much uh, for being here uh, with me today. For you, what it means to be here today in the European Parliament? What this house means for a German, from a liberal German? <laughs> for me personal, but I think um, maybe a lot of Germans would share this feeling, this is the house where we are really working for the future of the whole continent. And taking all this diversity from our continent uh, but putting it together on the base of the same values, um, this is, I think, uh, really, really interesting and, and, and for me, very passionate topic. And you have held almost every important political decision that is from a regional uh, level to now to the European level where you are here, Vice President of the, of the Chamber. But you have also held important organic positions within your party, which it was more difficult, in your opinion, dealing with internal party issues or dealing with parliamentary issues? At the end, all this is people's business. So you have to deal with people. And this means that you have first to listen, to, to, to understand what is the emotion which is moving them. And then to try to take all, to wrap this up, um, to come to a common solution. Um, so in a party, it's maybe more uh, motivating people um, to fight up for a common vision. Um, so this is may, maybe more of creating a vision by motivated members. And in a parliament, uh, of course, uh, is a very interesting uh, thing, also because the European Parliament is based on compromising. But I think that often with the rapporteurs and some of the colleagues from the other groups, we found more confronting and, and more and more aggressive handling of topics um, and this for me uh, is much more difficult than going and searching in the party together with our members a common way to to really um, to build up the future. Yeah. Your party had recently uh, bad electoral results in 2013 it didn't reach the threshold of the Bundestag the German national parliament and, and it, it went out mm -hmm. from being in the parliament for decades but 
four years after that, you became really strong again. How, what would you say is the, the best practices, what you learned in that process for other liberal parties around Europe to understand how you managed to engage people again, to motivate them again? And in the last two electoral uh, processes you had in Germany, FDP is just growing and growing and growing. I do not know if there is one fits all uh, proposition on that. I just can tell you how we try to deal with that. But the, 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 the important point, I think, which we tried to manage was not asking ourselves how can we get back to Parliament, um, but that we ask ourselves why should we go back to Parliament? Why people, why citizens should vote for a liberal idea, for a liberal vision of the future of Germany. And so we invited all the members of the party to discuss about this question, why should we be elected next time? And this really churned the question because you, come, you do not focus on organizations, uh, campaignings. You really ask what is the DNA of a liberal in Germany in this case. We then had roadshows all over the country with all over the members so that we gave him also the opportunity to really to discuss with the political leaders their questions, propositions, um, their critics, but also what they would change. We also changed then the methods and procedures in the party so that we had uh, several political think tanks on important topics so that we were really uh, on the top of the discussion, of the political discussion also uh, in Germany. This gave us the base um, in the same time of ideas and visions uh, and at the same time of a very, very motivated membership. And I think this second point uh, is at least as important as the first one. And then we took this white base and focused on one person to get him through because we were out of parliament and out of public interest, out of the journals and out of TV shows. From that situation, you become now negotiating the future German, German government that we all know how much influence has in the whole European Union. In your view, what kind of of characters or profiles for politicians you need to actually reboot a, a party? What kind of tools they should have? In a team, uh, even if it's not visible in every moment, uh, I think the, the, the secret is really to have different characters. So um, maybe so different as the society is. If you care for people, you can stand with a lot of different characters. Um, the only uh, secret is that they have also to care for people. As you know, Ciudadanos now we are in, in one of those uh, bad moments that we have really uh, bad uh, result in the last national elections. What else would you suggest someone from Ciudadanos that is watching you? What would you tell him or her to, 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 to try to, not only on the aspirational side that we all, we are liberals and we want to, to, to make the institutions and our societies more and more liberal, but, but on a more party-based thing, what, what would you say to them? I think it's really important first to search in yourself for this why, why we should have, we should be elected. Uh, because of course we had a lot of advisor from outside. So, so those who said, okay, you have to go more left, you have to go more right, you have to go more that one or this one. All people, and you can be sure for that, who never voted for liberals. So this is not a good advice. So you, you should not look right or, or left. You even should not look at all, on, on all those polls of society. Uh, what are people thinking about climate, education, or what else? Um, because all this, I mean, you do not make politics and because people are think like this, you can take this in account, but it should not be the reason for your vision. You really have to search in the DNA why this liberal thinking should be in the Spanish society. What would it change? And what is then the purpose you also make public and, and campaign for with, with the other citizens? And I mean, the Ciudadanos for us as FDP in Germany some years ago were really inspiring 
we had delegations coming down to Madrid and other regions of Spain to there, discuss with the with the Sierra Dardanos because they came really up from the citizens. Christian Lindner himself. Yes, and, and, and we were there to, to learn about how we can engage all those people from normal society to come in in politics because we want to represent them and not some of the bigger clubs. And so you were inspiring some years ago. I'm totally convinced you can re rethink and, 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 and rebuild up. Si la libertad es antónimo del populismo, una de las voces más fuertes contra el autoritario gobierno de Víctor Orbán en Hungría ha sido Momentum. Momentum es una plataforma nacida en Budapest de la mano de un grupo de estudiantes y jóvenes profesionales hartos de la deriva de su gobierno y de la falta de alternativas. Con la libertad y la defensa del Estado de Derecho por bandera, Momentum nace como movimiento cívico y político en 2017 y en 2019 sale elegido como tercera fuerza en las elecciones europeas. Su candidata, Katalin Cech, cuenta que visitó el Parlamento Europeo cuando estaba en la universidad y soñaba con poder representar a los húngaros desde Bruselas. Hoy camina por estos pasillos como una de las diputadas más jóvenes y prometedoras del Parlamento. Afable, pero aguerrida, en sus ojos brilla la convicción de quien ha empezado desde abajo y tiene muy claras sus ideas. Well, Katalin Czech, thank you very much uh, for being here with us today. Uh, you are from Hungary. You are one of the youngest MEPs, I would say, in the Liberal Group, in Renew Group. And you're also, I would say, that like the strong young voice we have in the group on, that defends liberal values not only in Hungary, but also here in the European Parliament. And you're also vice president of the group. I don't want to forget that. But before getting into the questions I want to ask you, the first one I want to ask is, what it is momentum? We are a centrist liberal party. I was one of the founders and we established this party along with nine other friends uh, with the notion that we need to give representation and a voice for those young people who do not feel represented in our political system, who want to fight for a democratic Hungary, for the rule of law, uh, for a European Hungary where you can uh, succeed and you don't have to leave abroad uh, to have a good life, uh, stable uh, living conditions, and also stable legal conditions around you. And right now we are one of the strongest opposition parties in Hungary, and hopefully with the joint opposition coalition we will be part of the new government uh, that will topple Viktor Orban next April and steer back to the country to the European route it uh, was always supposed to be at. The thing is, uh, you were born in 2017, and then, f since then, well, you have had uh, bad electoral results, but really good electoral results, like the European uh, elections in 2019, that you got over 10%. What were the main challenges that you faced in that building up, and which things do you think uh, were uh, uh, good decisions that actually uh, made what Momentum is, is today? I think the big challenge was us to transform our energy and our ideas and our values and also of the, the great expectation the society had after our first uh, successful project into actually results, uh, a party that can deliver. Because it was, after a point it was not enough that we had all the right ideas and we had people who wanted to fight for these ideas. We also needed to have the structures. And, uh, we needed to get on the ground, do a very strong grassroots level operation, establish ourselves at even in the smallest towns. Uh, we needed to find links with the local community. And that's difficult. Uh, a lot of uh, people think that politics is about, you know, going into a TV studio, debating, or coming here to the European Parliament, having a speech in the plenary. No, this is just on the surface. For us, the real work and how we built up our community involved waking up 5 a.m., uh, driving two hours to reach the market hall in a small town far away from your comfortable bed on a Saturday morning, talk to people for hours and hours and answer all the questions and face all the criticism, uh, dine with people there, eat their food, uh, help them out with uh, the tasks around uh, their community. We painted benches uh, in rural towns where they didn't have enough resources, for instance. We did fundraising for kindergartens. Uh, we try to show to the people that politics is not about being elected, but politics is 
about doing something to your com uh, community that makes it feel better. And this is a lot of work. In your view, when you go back to that, those challenging years that you are still there, I, I think, because you are still building up the thing, if you could change anything that you did, if there was something to say, well, this was a mistake, I would have done it in a different way, what, what would that be? Well, I mean, if I could change things, uh, I could change a lot. Uh, we should have been uh, more professional from the early beginning. We had a lot of infightings during our first campaign about small things, minor things, really, uh, about, I don't know, uh, who did show off to work late uh, and things like that. And, and these minor infightings sometimes really took off uh, our focus from uh, the large task we were faced, uh, which is a fight for a better country. Um, also, I, uh, I think that we should have uh, be a bit more realistic, I think, with our activists at first. Because we thought that we are this you know, group of young people, the stars in our eyes, and uh, it's absolutely clear that we will make it to the Hungarian parliament in 2018, one year after we were established, and we did not. It's, we reached 3% way below the threshold. It was a very big disappointment for everybody. And uh, it was partially because we just like, so believed in ourselves and in our mission that we just couldn't imagine that we couldn't realize it. But I think we have to be honest with ourselves, see the long-term goal, and also see the steps that we have to take to get, that, get to that point. And you know, a bad election result is not the end of the word. The end of the word is if you don't get up after it and continue fighting. I, want, I wanted to ask you about that 2018, um, uh, uh, well, that you didn't get elected to the national parliament, your party didn't, get the, didn't go over the result. And I remember that here in, in, in ALDE back then, we were looking at momentum like, wow, they're going to manage because in the polls you, it looked like you will enter uh, somehow the, the parliament and it didn't happen. How did you manage internally the party and you have been always in a leadership role to, you know, reboot, to engage against the people, not to let them go down and then just one year after you went from below 3% to 11 What was the success, the recipe for success in just one year? We, we continued to build the party starting the next day. Uh, we didn't rest, we didn't uh, succumb to our uh, difficulties uh, of our pain, of our complaining, but we kept on building. And uh, I think this is, this is really so important. that Even if you are in a bad period, if you keep on working, eventually you will get somewhere. Uh, and of course, it needs time to you know, process the your feelings also, because well, politicians have feelings, activists have even more feelings, that's normal. Uh, and also we have to take stock and all that. Uh, but a party is actually, I think it's much more about the feelings of the party members of the community. It's about the service we are doing for our community. And uh, we can continue this service, whether we are in parliament, outside parliament, whether we are at 2%, 10%, and the more people see that we are there for us, and not only before elections, you know, but we are there for us continuously, this is, I think, the way to in, uh, ensure that our support keeps growing, that more people know about us, and that we can uh, ensure a meaningful participation of our uh, politicians and activists in the local community that we all feel so much for. And now, after that great success in 2019, you are like the really pro-European um, party in Hungary that actually represents everything that Orban does not, right? Which is liberalism, rule of law, free association, free media, and so on. Is, is actually this message uh, getting to Hungary? Is people, um, does people there mix momentum with European Union and the European values? I, I think I try to do my best in uh, exhausting my opportunities here in terms of uh, you know legislative uh, achievements but also to try to bring this home and speak truth to power and tell the people how much Orban is hurting the country in Europe, in the community, which is our home and where uh, we receive so much security, funding, uh, um, trade, uh, solidarity. So we are trying to do both. And I, um, I think we managed to twist the narrative a bit. What we do here is actually uh, internal politics. It's about our taxes, it's about our trade, it's about the food we eat, the air we breathe, uh, the uh, labor rules we have to adhere to. This is very internal. And I think with uh, being strong advocates uh, of European issues, we, we managed to centralize this in the debate and I think 
of course, I don't know, but in the next year's uh, election, the role of Hungary in Europe will take a central role. Well, what it takes, a lot of coffee. <laughs> it has to be hard to defend liberal values in, in Hungary. Do you find mismatch between what you defend and what, for instance, a Spanish liberal or a Dutch liberal defends in their countries? I think every country is different in a bit. So, uh, of course, we disagree on some policies, and that's normal. Uh, but I think what we agree on is the basic foundations upon which this union is based. And we, I think every single one of the, us in the group agrees on the uh, primacy of the rule of law, on the importance of transparency, of uh, good fiscal conduct, and uh, on equal rights and opportunities for every individual. And I think this is the most important. Going back to the party, you know that Ciudadanos, my party, is a little bit on a, on a negative trend, as you know. We are not uh, managing to do a rebound, although we are still in, in parliament. What would you advice to Ciudadanos, not only members or voters, but even citizens that maybe sometime they vote for Ciudadanos and, and, and now they don't vote. What, what is the best advice you could give them to try to understand or defend that there is a liberal space in Spain and it's worth to fight for it? What I can say as a very general advice, but what I would really advise everybody who is in politics or around politics, that maybe sometimes it's time to like put aside the polling and the opinion research and try to find out what people want and what could be popular and who are like the you know target audiences but just like sit down sometimes and think about why we started this whole project what are the values what are the goals we were started to fight for when we got into this business because i think real passion comes from the heart why are we here on the first uh, yes on what the first are place? we want to achieve in this game of politics, what change I would like to see in my country or in the world, what I want to fight for. And, and I think we should also work a bit more on the bond between parties and the communities. We need to be present in the local communities, talk a lot, understand people's issues, uh, listen to their advices and, and try to be a living part of the community and not only a separated uh, club. Jacob, I'm going to throw you a few uh, names of parties and just tell me what is your view on that party, on maybe a success that they have had or a failure they have had. So the first one I want to, to throw you is NEOS, our Austrian Liberal Party, which is quite new, I have to say. Yes, absolutely. I mean, what they did good was they, 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 they understood that there were, there were something in the society of Austria that required change from the dual-pole conservative social democrats system. There was a need for this, there was a space for it. Matthias, who was the party leader and the founder back then, uh, was charismatic, he connected well. I would say the, the biggest challenge they had, and that's a, probably a general challenge uh, in, in most of these new founder parties, is it is too much connected to the party leader, to the founder in the sense that once the party leader steps down, you need to make sure you've done the investment in having the next person uh, ready. USR Plus, that is also a new movement against corruption, transparency, that was born less than 10 years ago, and now is trying to form government in Romania. They have kind of placed themselves as this responsible middle of the ground, fiscally focused, uh, rule of law, anti-corruption, still as a key part of it party that is the new Romania, the, the, the way that people want Romania to move to, right? Responsible, yeah. not populist. Exactly. And what is the bad thing that they did? I mean, they also have had some infighting, to be honest, and they've t shifted a little bit ground, so whether to go with one or the other direction of what they should, should fight for. But uh, they, they seem to have, have stabilized the ship, so to say, now. And I know I asked you for two like new parties like USR Plus in Romania, NEOS in Austria, but now I'm going to go to a more traditional one. FDP, the Liberal German Party, that they were out of the Bundestag yes. 12 years ago, and now they are negotiating to form a new German government. Yeah. I was there on that evening in September 2013 the, when they didn't get in. That was a shock to everybody in, in Berlin, I can tell you. They turned to Kirsten Lindner, who is now still the, the party leader. What they did is, we need to go back then to our roots. How do we reinvent ourselves? The only way to reinvent yourself is let's go back to basics and then build up a, a profile or a story from there. Like I said in many of the other examples, sometimes it is 
about putting in the I'll have a plan based on very solid research, 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 right? Have a plan, follow it, execute it, and the re reward will come. And then the last part is through at you, Ciudadanos. I mean, it, it, to some way, it, 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 it sums up uh, a lot of the different examples we talked about be before, right? I mean, there, there is a strong charismatic leader you, you, you raise, and uh, then there's a change, and there is a, a scale down, and you now need to be in a situation where you have to rebuild yourself, so to say. Without a doubt, there is an appetite in the, in the Spanish voters for a party like Ciudadanos. It's clear. I mean, you wouldn't have gotten that support if there wasn't an appetite. These people haven't just turned anti Ciudadanos, or at least not anti what the party stands for. But people have to believe in the project at the end of the day, right? They, as I said, they, will, they want you to be the champion for what they want to have fought for. But you have to tell them what is your project, right? So again, go back to the roots, define what is it actually we want to. In a perfect world, do the hard work. Everything I just said about FTP, for instance. I could have said it about D66 from back from 2006. I could have said it about, I mean, the, the Lib Dems in the United Kingdom has been through this process. My own party in Venstre in Denmark is going through it at the moment. And all the parties that we have that are good examples of, of this, have more or less, of course there are differences a little bit, but more or less gone through the same thing. We need to find what is our core. We need to, to find the core few issues that we are gonna, that we are gonna uh, sell ourselves uh, as being the main champion of. Do the research, figure out where these voters are, how do they look like, what do they care about, how do I talk to them, go out there and then make a communication plan, make an activity plan, go out, talk to them and put in the hours. And it, by that, I mean, it has to be the leadership. It has to be your, your top people because the others, everybody else in the, in the party will, should definitely also do this, should also follow the same strategy. But you cannot point to any party in the world, any organization, any company where it's not the culture from the top leadership that sets the tone. Mm -hmm.